Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvelous video. Johnny Blaze, a talented daredevil who later changed into the anti-hero known as Ghost Rider after selling his soul to a demon, was first featured by Marvel in 1972. Readers welcomed the character right away because he offered a new and fascinating perspective on the traditional superhero premise. Since his debut, the character has gone on to appear in a number of television programs, both live action and animated video games, and has even served as the subject of two feature films. While Johnny Blaze might be the most well-known bearer of the flaming mantle, there have been other people who have carried the spirit of vengeance, which is an intriguing aspect of the anti-hero. Multiple authors and artists have explored several iterations of Ghost Rider due to the always changing nature of comic books. Even while not all of these adaptations have been widely popular, they have all contributed significantly to the development of the Ghost Rider mythology. It could be difficult to choose who best embodies the spirit of vengeance given the vast number of Ghost Riders that have appeared over the years. Given this, we at Marvelous Videos decided it would be appropriate to talk about the most popular iterations of the Rider. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Johnny Blaze Jonathan Blaze, better known as Ghost Rider in American comic books, appears often in Marvel Comics work. After Carter Slade, the Western comics hero is later known as the Phantom Rider, and before Daniel Ketch, Alejandro Jones, and Robbie Reyes, he's the second Marvel character to take the moniker Ghost Rider. The character's narrative starts when motorcycle stuntman Johnny Blaze forms a relationship with the spirit of vengeance, Zarathos after making a deal with Mephisto to spare his adoptive father. As the Ghost Rider, Johnny seeks retribution using his supernatural skills. One of the most powerful creatures in both the mortal and eternal realms is Johnny Blaze. He was made by the might of God himself centuries ago to wreak retribution on the crimes of mankind. He's a primeval agent of heaven, empowered by the spirits of revenge. The Ghost Rider's recurring theme is a human host who transforms into a flaming-headed skeleton with a vehicle and supernatural skills. They can ride their automobiles faster than ordinary vehicles while performing seemingly impossible maneuvers, such as riding straight up a vertical surface or across water. When converted at first, Blaze's motorcycle would just catch fire. Later, he succeeded in creating a cycle made completely of flame, Hellfire. Hellfire is a magical flame, yet it may also be used as a regular flame, and it usually burns the soul as opposed to the body. He mostly uses Hellfire as an offensive weapon. In addition, he has almost indestructible physical resistance, superhuman strength, and rapid reflexes. Reflexes. Since Ghost Rider is made entirely of Hellfire, whatever damage he does sustain is quickly repaired thanks to his ability to use it to immediately grow new limbs and patch up holes in his body. Carter Slade Along with his brother Lincoln, Carter Slade was born and raised in Ohio in the middle of the 19th century. At some point, Carter decided to go to the New Frontiers to work as a teacher in the Montanan community of Bison Bend. But just as he was about to arrive, he saw what seemed to be Indians killing defenseless homesteaders. He had been a collegiate boxing champion, but he had no firearms training, and he could not in any case allow such a horrendous act to go unpunished. Riding into the conflict, he learned the assailants weren't Native Americans but rather white males in Indian garb. Despite the government's participation in putting settlers, they were cattle herders upset that settlers were moving in and claiming what they believed to be their territory. Despite his valiant efforts, Carter finally lost the battle, was shot several times, and is now slowly dying from his wounds. Jamie Jacobs, the adolescent son of the slain settlers, came out of hiding at that moment and went in search of his father. Knowing what had transpired, Jamie was able to mount Carter and ride off in search of of assistance. He was going the wrong way though, and after several exhausting hours, he fell to the ground. However, several amiable Indians who were present led Slade and Jacobs to see their medicine man, Flaming Star. Many years earlier, a shooting star had fallen from the sky over Flaming Star, bringing with it an abundance of phosphorescent dust. Flaming Star saw this as a message from the Great Spirit, and he understood that the Great Spirit would one day send him a champion to use his glowing dust and a unique cape to battle injustice. After three days of prayer, chanting, and making potions and herbs, Flaming Star was ready to give up on Carter when his fever stopped 
and he awakened, seemingly totally recovered. At that point, Flaming Star understood Carter Slade was the champion tasked with upholding justice and had been sent to him. He presented Carter with the cloak he'd made, which had two sides and a black inside to contrast with the white outside. He also provided Carter with all of the phosphorescent dust and showed him a wild white horse, which Carter was able to capture and give the name Banshee after hearing it neigh. Carter dubbed himself the Ghost Rider after creating a whole outfit to go with the cloak and horse. However, subsequently, others started calling him other names like the Knight Rider and the Phantom Rider. His first deed as the Phantom Rider was to apprehend the cattle herders, commanded by Jason Bartholomew, who were responsible for the murder of Jamie Jacobs' parents. He immediately started working on getting the people of Bison Bend a schoolhouse, and he took Jamie in as his ward and adopted son. In the movie, the Ghost Rider before Johnny Blaze was Carter. Carter used to be a Texas Ranger before he developed greed. Carter was given the death, but a stranger approached him and proposed a bargain that would release him. Carter became a Ghost Rider as a result of the arrangement. Then Mephistopheles dispatched Carter to San Venganza, where he acquired a contract with 1,000 souls. Carter did something that no other Ghost Rider had ever done before. He was going to outrun the devil, knowing that these wicked souls would bring damnation on Earth. Carter kept the deal secret for 150 years. Carter rose to fame as the graveyard keeper for a church. Carter created a phony burial for himself to elude Mephistopheles. Carter attended to Johnny Blaze's wounds after the new Ghost Rider passed out in the cemetery following his first transformation. Carter also described the punishment glare to Johnny. The following day, Carter informed Johnny about his grave. Johnny was informed by Carter that the contract for San Venganza was kept in the grave and that it must not get into the hands of Blackheart or Mephistopheles. That evening, Johnny returned to excavate the burial. The contract was in his shovel, Carter then tells him. Carter advised Johnny to consider this, but Johnny persuades Carter to let him leave. Carter agreed to this since Johnny was acting out of love rather than avarice, which made God on his side. Carter decided to accompany Johnny and changed, showing himself. Carter escorts Johnny 500 kilometers to San Venganza as they travel together. Carter gives Johnny his shotgun as they near the outskirts of San Venganza and tells him to remain in the shadows. Then, as Carter continues to ride away, he tells Johnny that he can only change one more person. Carter asks God for another chance and he receives it. Johnny extends his genuine gratitude to Carter and then leaves. Carter Slade had earned the ability to become intangible, to fire ethereal energy from his spirit weapons and other ghostly capabilities after truly becoming a spirit. He imparts these abilities to his descendant Hamilton when he inhabits his body. Cosmic Ghost Rider The Punisher died after being struck in the head by building rubble as the heroes of Earth were making their final stand against Thanos. His soul was then taken to hell. The Punisher made a demonic agreement with Mephisto and became the newest Ghost Rider because he was ready to do anything to exact revenge on Thanos for destroying his planet. But when he got back to Earth, Thanos was gone and the entire planet was dead. The following countless years were spent by the Ghost Rider alone, wandering and dying without anybody to murder or love. The Ghost Rider offered him the dead planet in return for the chance to punish the Mad Titan as his herald when a severely damaged Galactus came to Earth to fight Thanos, ignorant that the world's populace had already been wiped out. The Great Devourer accepted the offer. They became legendary as a result of their joint exploration of the cosmos in an effort to stop Thanos' deliverance eradication of all life. They battled Thanos for years, but their tale came to an end when he decapitated Galactus as he reached the battlefield. Thanos made the Ghost Rider his servant by offering him the chance to witness more evil than he could punish in a thousand lifetimes. To assist his older self gain the love of death by slaying the Fallen One, the one entity who managed to evade him, King Thanos ordered the Rider to utilize the Time Stone to transport a younger Thanos to the future. Unbeknownst to the Rider, King Thanos required his younger self to kill himself to finally join Death's side. He didn't need him to murder the Fallen One. The time displaced Thanos saw his elder self's true goals when the Fallen One used Mjolnir to destroy the Rider, and he then proceeded to stop this future from ever occurring. Cosmic Ghost Rider shares all the powers of Johnny Blaze as Ghost Rider. Other than that, the Rider uses the power Cosmic, much as all the previous Heralds of Galactus before him. All of his physical talents have probably been improved, albeit it is unknown how much. 
Venom, Ghost Rider, Hulk. Blackheart, the demonic son of Mephisto, established a vortex in Las Vegas, intending to bring some of Hell to Earth and destroy his father. There, Venom was on the run, and Red Hulk wanted to hand him up to the police. In search of the person who took a sample of her blood, X-23 was there. The new Ghost Rider also picked up on Blackheart's evil intentions. The four heroes unexpectedly found themselves facing up against Blackheart. Flash's antithesis was an evangelist who utilized the symbiote, his father, and his drinking problem to combat the villain who also made antitheses of the other three heroes. The heroes fought valiantly, but they were finally defeated. Mephisto gave the heroes a second shot at life in Hell in return for their victory over Blackheart. They were able to free the spirit of vengeance, which Blackheart had imprisoned, and they sought to deliver it to Blaze so he could reclaim his identity as the Ghost Rider. Blackheart threw Red Hulk and Venom away during the conflict. Red Hulk received the symbiote from Flash, and it joined forces with both him and the spirit of vengeance to transform him into the circle of four, a gestalt creature. When the Circle of Four used the mirror that formed antitheses to construct Blackheart's antithesis, Blackheart was vanquished. Meanwhile, Johnny Blaze was assisted by Flash and X-23 in returning Hell through the spatial vortex it originated from and destroying it. When everything was back to normal in Las Vegas, Red Hulk gave Flash the symbiote and Alejandra the spirit of vengeance before leaving the area. When the secret Avengers arrived, Captain America attempted to arrest Venom, but he persuaded Cap to let him join the team instead, giving Giant Man and Beast the chance to try to tame the symbiote. Ghost Rider 2099. Hacker and Shiro Zero Cochran belonged to the street group Hotwire Martyrs, which had its headquarters in the sprawling Transverse City. The Martyrs broke into a fiber optic trunk line in the middle of 2099 and stole a highly encrypted data archive from an unidentified source. A group known as the Artificial Kids ambushed the Martyrs while they were working to decode the file killing the majority of them before pursuing Zero and the Archive. Zero makes one last-ditch effort to swindle the kids by sending the encrypted file to his girlfriend and then jacking straight into cyberspace to burn out his headwear implants. However, the poison from the flechette round he took while escaping the kids is quickly eating away at his nervous system. Zero awakened to find himself in a bizarre cyberspace inhabited by a collection of renegade machine intelligences that call their world the Ghost Works, not long after his white-hot fade into to oblivion. The existing state of human civilization, which is your standard corporation's own everything cyberpunk nightmare, was seen by these AIs as being on the verge of a complete collapse. They also wanted to send Zero back to the actual world to act as their agent of change, since they were reliant on the technical infrastructure of the planet to survive. The Ghostworks presented the situation as a way for him to avenge. The system and all those authoritative types who look bound and determined to make life miserable for the common person appeal to his anarchist views. Of course, Zero agreed. However, it is questionable whether this was truly of his own free will or as a result of minute adjustments the AIs had made to his personality construct. Invading an automated factory, the machines built a substantially modified Cybertech 101 warbot, outfitted with cutting-edge nanotechnology weapons, self-healing powers, and camouflage, and downloaded their copy of Zero's personality into its neural net. Before taking to the streets, Zero utilized the robot's holographic skills to cover his skull-like head in fake flames as a tribute to his lost friends and to resemble the Ghost Riders of earlier ages. He was right to seek vengeance on those who had killed them as his first course of action. His search finally brought him back to his father, Harrison Cochran, and the Demonics business, the actual proprietors of the Archive. Ghost Rider 2099 has a solid form holographic camouflage system and a stealth field generator. He also has nanite-assisted total body regenerative abilities dual configuration chassis with compact disguise mode and bulky combat mode. He also has variable power eye-mounted lasers. Daniel Ketch Barton, Blaze, and Naomi Kale gave birth to Daniel, Danny, Ketch, and Barbara. But when they were very little, Francis Ketch, a widow, took in the siblings. The two only knew Mrs. Ketch was their mother throughout their childhood, although their actual mother, Naomi Kale, continued to watch over them until her passing ten years later. He was featured in a television interview after witnessing Spider-Man and the Human Torch operating the Spider-Mobile up walls while on a fifth grade field trip to Manhattan. The lovely, average everyday paperboy Danny posed for a photo with Phil and Doris Sheldon to commemorate Phil's decision to stop shooting superheroes. When they were adolescents, Danny
Danny accompanied his sister Barbara to a cemetery on Halloween night so she could shoot photographs of Harry Houdini's grave. The siblings came into a conflict between two gangs while on their outing. One was commanded by Death Watch and the other was made up of the Kingpin's cronies. When Barbara called out, Death Watch heard her and intervened to stop the battle between the two gangs. One of Death Watch's goons shot Barbara in the chest with an arrow, so Danny took his sister's body and fled to a neighboring junkyard. He was hiding there with his sister's lifeless body, distraught and covered in her blood from Death Watch's goons when he saw a brand new motorcycle with a bright gas cap. Danny he examined the glowing gas cap with his bloodstained palm and quickly changed into Ghost Rider, a spirit of vengeance with the duty to exact vengeance on those who had killed innocent people. Danny was only marginally able to influence his behavior since as Ghost Rider, both Daniel's mind and Ghost Rider's mind were in charge. When the cops showed up, they stopped Ghost Rider as he was about to torture the Death Watch goons. Ghost Rider rode away from the authorities on his blazing motorcycle, which had also been altered when Danny touched the incandescent gas cap, leaving Barbara's body behind. Ghost Rider eventually pulled into a dark alleyway and changed back into Daniel Ketch. The police brought Barbara's comatose corpse to a hospital, but not long after that, Blackout, who had discovered Daniel's covert identity and was seeking retribution for Ghost Rider burning his face, murdered her an injury Blackout had himself to blame for. Jack Doria, a close friend of Dan's, finally became involved in the battle against Death Watch's troops and assisted Ghost Rider in defeating them. Daniel Ketch has the same powers as Johnny Blaze, along with a supernatural talent that allowed him to change into the spirit of corruption, an armored warrior capable of fending off a spirit of vengeance, a rotting carapace, and a green supernatural liquid pouring and rushing out of Danny's flesh are how he describes the transition. From his insides, he also carried the enormous blade known as the Blight Blade. Danny was being engulfed by the spirit, yet he still had some humanity left. He gained additional powers when in this form. When his hands touch a person, they might burn the flesh. The Blight Blade, a magical weapon, was in Ketch's hands. Given that it's a component of his physiology, it was produced from the same materials as him. Every corrupt act a person has ever performed consumes them from the inside out turning them into a mound of sludge if they are stabbed by the sword. However, according to Frank Castle, if a person had not committed any corrupt acts, they would have instead been crippled and slowly making a full recovery as tar and rot emanated from their bodies. Noble Kale Noble, the original Ghost Rider, was born in the 18th century and raised by his violent father, Pastor Kale, and his younger brother, Dante. Due to Magdalena's dark coloring and Noble Father's strict religious beliefs, the pair kept their romance a secret from the outside world. However, they were compelled to reveal Pastor when Magdalena became pregnant with Noble's kid, and the two soon got married. Magdalena quickly learned Pastor's sinister secret, that he was a subordinate of the evil Lord Mephisto after they got married. Magdalena was burnt at the stake by Pastor after he falsely accused her of being a witch to hide his discoveries. He drugged, tormented, and beat his kid in the Pastor's church cellar, knowing Noble would object. Magdalena used a curse to conjure Furies, demonic beings who hunt down and murder mistreated women just before she died. Furies killed town residents out of fear of death. In exchange for Pastor's safety, Mephisto agreed to give Noble his soul. When Mephisto discovered that Noble was bound to a fragment of the Medallion of Power, he activated the piece to convert Noble into the first spirit of vengeance. After Ghost Rider had defeated the Furies, the pastor presented him with Noble's son's flesh as payment. Noble killed himself because he didn't want to eat his child. The Archangel Uriel arrived as Mephisto, Mephisto's brother, attempted to take Noble Kale's soul and requested that it be spared. Since no compromise could be found, it was decided that Noble's soul would belong to neither dimension and would instead stay in the void until it was reunited with some of his family members. The Spirit of Vengeance grants the Ghost Rider the usual abilities, such as the ability to use Hellfire, the Penance Glare, and exceptional durability. Ghost Rider 1 Million BC The young guy who eventually became the first Ghost Rider was a member of a tribe of cavemen who lived on Earth roughly a million years ago. He discovered he was brighter than the other members of his pack at a young age, but he kept this information to himself out of concern for being rejected. One day, a strange guy entered the group, immediately using force to establish himself as the leader. A Wendigo eventually emerged from the shadows, devouring the entire pack save for the small child. The stranger gave the youngster the moniker Ghost and told him to go find him before he left. After learning that everyone he'd ever known had died, the youngster decided to leave his cave, believing that if the stranger could live, so could he. Ghost eventually became worn out by the hostile surroundings. The snake approached him at that point and persuaded him to use its genuine name to accomplish his objective. 
Following his metamorphosis, Ghost made friends with a mammoth and later became attached to a spirit of vengeance. After searching for the Wendigo for five years, Ghost eventually found him, exacted his vengeance, and fought him viciously. The Wendigo declared that he would survive the fall, but wondered if the rider could endure the loneliness now that his mammoth buddy was gone. The struggle finished with the Wendigo driving Ghost's mammoth down a cliff with him. Odin and Lady Phoenix then addressed the rider and invited him to join the prehistoric Avengers. Together, they battled the fallen and out of control celestial ghost rider pledged to get revenge on the fallen once his new mammoth was murdered and he also promised to taste its blood the fallen were ultimately vanquished by the avengers who imprisoned them in a subterranean dungeon in what would one day become south africa later he joined his comrades in the first hosts conflict the woolly mammoths that the ghost rider rode were filled with hellfire Roberto Reyes The 5th Street Locos gang members killed Roberto Robbie Reyes, a mechanic, but Johnny Blaze was able to revive him and give him the ability to change into the evil Ghost Rider. To exact revenge for his death and his brother's incapacity as a result of the attempt on their life, Ghost Rider continued to hunt down and kill these criminals until Quake, who wanted to stop Reyes' killings, found him. Reyes eventually followed Quake to S.H.I.E.L.D., where he helped them fight Lucy Bauer and her quest to find the Darkhold, which held an ancient power. To assassinate his uncle Eli Morrow and the Chinatown crew, Reyes assisted S.H.I.E.L.D. in killing them, but in the process, Reyes allowed himself to be transferred to Hell. Ghost Rider eventually managed to get away, just in time to assist S.H.I.E.L.D. in taking out the insane Ada and finally getting rid of the Darkhold. Robbie Reyes and his younger brother Gabe were reared in Los Angeles by their uncle Eli Morrow. In the 11th grade, Reyes left Garfield High School and began working at Canelo's Auto and Body. Reyes had decided to steal his uncle Eli Morrow's automobile one day and drive it to Los Angeles for an unauthorized drag race. Reyes was caught by Gabe Reyes, who asked him what he was doing as he was stealthily shoving the car out of the drive so as not to disturb his uncle. Reyes requested Gabe to join him in the race because he was overconfident in himself. As they cruised about the neighborhood, Gabe teased Reyes that he was not permitted to assist him with his schoolwork and that if he did, Reyes would just make him fail. A bunch of 5th Street Locos pulled up in front of their automobile as they were laughing and making fun of one another as they drove down the street together. Reyes was shocked to see the gang members tossing a Molotov cocktail at him and his brother, setting the front of the Hell Charger on fire as he honked his horn to persuade them to get out of the way. Reyes tried to flee their pursuers by putting the car in reverse and utilizing his driving talents, but the Locos soon caught up with the brothers and shot at their car, striking both of them and forcing their automobile to crash. Robbie was flung from the car and sent soaring into the air with his body covered in gunshot wounds, while Gabe was rendered unable to walk as a result of the injuries he sustained in the attack. Reyes begged God, the cosmos, and anyone else who would listen to spare Gabe as he was plummeting through the air. He hated himself for the catastrophe and vowed he would do whatever to save Gabe. Reyes then fell to the ground, dying from the collision. But in the pitch blackness, Reyes heard a voice asking him whether he wanted a second chance, whether he wanted to punish those who had injured his brother, and whether he wanted to exact revenge on himself. Reyes quoted, Yes, absolutely, more than anything, and a split second later, he came back to life. Gabe was rescued from the flaming automobile by an enigmatic rider on a motorbike. When the stranger got close to Robbie, he revealed himself to be Johnny Blaze, a demon with a blazing skull for a head. Before vanishing, Blaze touched Robbie and imbued him with the spirit of vengeance, transforming him into the next Ghost Rider. Over five years would pass before Robbie finally informed Gabe the truth about what had transpired that evening out of concern for Gabe's comprehension. After being found guilty of trying to kill his former boss, Eli Morrow was eventually transported to Southridge Penitentiary. However, he assured Robbie that this guy deserved it. Ghost Rider was able to produce and send flames out from his body. Robbie probably started the fire that was Hellfire, even if it was never explicitly acknowledged. Robbie could manifest burning chains from his body while changed. These chains were demonstrated to be powerful enough to pull an arm off of a celestial. His evil uncle Eli gave Robbie a supernaturally enhanced being that was linked to his automobile. He could command his automobile to launch different fire assaults and engage in ramming maneuvers. Ghost Rider may partially phase through his vehicle and other items or locations. He frequently used this to frighten and assault the foes he was up against. Robbie could launch his adversaries through the charger's trunk, which served as a portable portal to hell. It can even release a swarm of creatures with writhing tentacles to better encircle adversaries and drag them into the blazing pit on his behalf. When Robbie sustained severe physical or mental 
harm, his hell charger would link to him through its internal wiring to restore both of them. Robbie was a ghost rider, but he had the unique ability to teleport over different distances. He was known as the hell charger because of his capacity to serve as a hub and port between locations. He could create hellfire gateways in addition to teleportation. Robbie's automobile had shown to be able to converse with the dead or with souls. It might have even directed Ghost Rider to the person's family tree and made contact with them. The Charger was equally capable as a submersible and a car, and it could go on top of water and asphalt with equal ease. Robbie's Hell Charger could even fly in the voids of space, where it could compete in a race for speed against the likes of the Silver Surfer. His primary goal was to assassinate a list of criminal bosses motivated by the rage of his uncle Eli. Robbie's Ghost Rider had the power to conjure a devilish spire that pulled his foes down to hell. If he still retains this ability is unknown. The wrath that drove Robbie Ray as his Ghost Rider's ability showed him how to improve his form. He developed into a more potent demonic figure by slaying and punishing the criminals he encountered. The wounds cut into his head are the first thing that makes this clear. It would have an impact on his body physically and medically in human form. Robbie may turn into a Hell Charger and endow whatever vehicle he comes into touch with its abilities. A Quinjet and a deceased Celestial's armor are two notable instances. Robbie acquired a Pen and Stare when possessed by Morrow. Its origin is unknown, however, it may be a skill related to the Ghost Rider standard Pen and Stare. He can use it to make someone experience the anguish and suffering he has inflicted upon innocent people. Robbie has also been able to use his possession of automobiles to cast the gaze. He acquired an original penance glare after affiliating with a spirit of vengeance. Robbie bragged of erupting in a mass of hellfire and converting much of Japan into a smoking crater in his more demonic form while entrance to the Legion of the Unliving. But Blade was able to rid himself of the taint the vampires used to manipulate him before he could use it. Alejandra Jones The mother of Alejandra Jones was an unidentified Mexican lady, while the father was an American human trafficker. Alejandra, like her siblings and sisters, was sold by her father and wound up with Adam in Nicaragua, where she and other orphans were given the training to become the next ghost rider behind the walls of a temple. Later on, Adam was successful in persuading Johnny Blaze, the current ghost rider, to abjure the curse. To choose the subsequent ghost rider, Adam then revived the Seeker. Alejandra was chosen and then transported to Dayton, Ohio to battle Scardi, the Red Skull's daughter and the Serpent's devoted follower. Although Alejandra fought valiantly, she was eventually unsuccessful. Meanwhile, Johnny Blaze discovered from Mephisto that Adam's ultimate objective was to purge humanity of all sin, therefore people becoming emotionless and mindless. Blaze decided to assist him in separating the Ghost Rider from Adam after feeling terrible for giving up the curse selfishly. Soon after Alejandra and Adam arrived back at the temple, he gave her the order to purge her fellow pupils of that immorality. Adam made her his slave after she resisted. Adam's ambitions were opposed by Blaze and the Seeker, who joined forces to thwart Adam when they arrived. All of Nicaragua was cleansed of sin when Adam converted Alejandra into a bomb, but Blaze and the Seeker were spared because they grabbed Blaze and utilized the Seeker's ability to counteract the Ghost Rider's strength to shield him from the explosion. After that, Adam rode the Ghost Rider to Cape Canaveral where he boarded a space shuttle and traveled to a space station. On board, Adams informed her that he wanted her to concentrate all of her strength and amplified through the space station's camera lens in order for it to cover the whole surface of the planet. In exchange for a bike he could ride into space, Johnny Blaze struck a deal with Mephisto and he brought the Seeker up with him to the space station. He flung him off the bike and back to Earth after understanding he was going to use her as a weapon. Alejandra struggled to regain control of her power, but Blaze was too late to stop Adam from making her release at all. She was moved by his comments and she overcame Adam's hold on her to detonate the space station. After saving Blaze, Alejandra Alejandra brought him back to Earth. Alejandra left without Blaze because she didn't want a second person to direct her actions. She wanted to return the souls of the Nicaraguans. After a spell of working alone, Alejandra turned to the Seeker for assistance in locating a method for restoring the Nicaraguan souls. He informed her that Hell was the location of their wickedness and that Blaze could assist her since he was in touch with Mephisto. However, Adam had survived the explosion at the space station and requested assistance from Steel Wind and her deceased sister Steel Vengeance in locating the Ghost Rider. Alejandra discovered that Blaze was being pursued by Hawkeye, who believed Blaze was responsible for the catastrophe in Nicaragua. Alejandra 
Sinatra helped him, but a gateway then sent them both to Japan. Steel Wind and Steel Revenge pursued them, but out of a desire for vengeance, they stole Blaze instead of the Ghost Rider. Hawkeye shot Alejandra in the chest with an arrow that had a magic neutralizing amulet attached, as she was about to run after them. While pursuing the sisters to aid Blaze, Hawkeye just wound up being abducted by them as well. Alejandra was successful in removing the arrow from her chest and vanquishing both of them. Alejandra was immobilized by an amulet, so Blaze decided to accompany her and teach her how to manage being the Ghost Rider, bringing the amulet with him just in case. Alejandra shared all the powers that Johnny Blaze had. She could even conjure up plagues based on biblical characters that aid her in eliminating everything created of sin, such as locusts. These locusts were so hazardous that they would erupt upon impact once they made contact. She could counteract any strike that uses hellfire. She also was capable of creating a demonic suit of armor that could fend off any supernatural assaults. Hellfire was used to make the entirety of this armor she could build portals with her hellfire that would take her somewhere more quickly than her bike. She had a single-use power that allowed her to transform the weather into a supernatural occurrence wherever she traveled. She could also summon an electrical storm from the sky to use as a weapon. Ghost Spider The Amazing Spider, a well-known and well-liked superhero who also became a wealthy and successful scientist with his own company called Parker Technologies, was created in this alternate reality where Peter Parker's Uncle Ben never passed away and helped Peter train to become a hero with his new spider abilities. The Amazing Spider utilized transportation technology his riches, and Ben's inspiration to import Spider-Men from other realities and absorb their strengths to boost his own. The Amazing Spider was damaged by the feedback of the Dimensional Vortex after bringing the Spider-Man of Earth 616 and convincing him that he happened to travel to our reality by mistake. Realizing that this reality was a perfect counterpart of his own, Spider-Man took him to his hideout, the web, beneath his mansion, and replaced him while he healed. After going to Parker Technologies, Peter discovered that the Ben Parker of this universe was alive and that the Amazing Spider already knew about him. Peter decided to go see Ben, who was aware of his existence because he was an ally of the Amazing Spider. They spoke about the differences between this reality and their lives until Ben gave Peter a tea that contained a sedative. Peter awoke on the web, where he was affixed to a device that would absorb his abilities and transfer them to an Amazing Spider, who had already made a full recovery. When Spider-Man questioned him, they both got into a battle and eventually, the Amazing Spider concluded that what he had done was not a Heroic. He and Ben had summoned other Peter Parkers from other worlds to increase their ability to protect his realm. The spider stood in the center and had his powers absorbed by the gadget, seemingly killing him, while Ben prepared to insert a bewildered Spider-Man into the device. He was put into a coma but it was later discovered that his spirit was imprisoned in hell, where he believed he deserved to be punished. Dr. Banner, the Sorcerer Supreme, released Parker by imbuing him with the spirits and abilities of the repentant Damned, granting him a second chance to live before dying in battle against his evil alter ego, the Infernal Hulk. After emerging from his slumber, he realized he'd changed into the Ghost Spider. After finishing the interdimensional translocator to send Spider-Man, Deadpool, and Hulk back to their reality, he eventually went back to Parker Technology. His powers are the same as those of Earth 616, Jonathan Blaze, and Peter Parker. Ghost Panther Gamora imprisoned all of the universe's souls inside the Soul Gem after obtaining control of the Infinity Stones. She split the cosmos in two, joining every soul with another, rendering its people helpless. Due to this line of action, Warp World, a pocket world where history was altered and tailored to the merged beings, was unintentionally created. Black Panther and Ghost Rider were combined to form Ghost Panther within Warp World. The haughty Wakandan prince T'Challa had been banished from the remote country by his father T'Chaka several years earlier in this reality. He was brought under the wing of entertainer Jericho Simpson in America. T'Challa achieved fame as a stunt rider under the alias Johnny Blaze. T'Challa experienced a deadly accident while doing a stunt five years later. Jericho, a skilled mystic, summoned Zarathos, a demon, to bring T'Challa back to life. T'Challa had a hunter's soul, which Zarathos could sense, and he gave him enormous power in exchange for his hunting the evildoer's souls for her. T'Challa declined, claiming the cost of the deal was too great. Zarathos informed T'Challa that his father had passed away before he came back to life. T'Challa traveled to Wakanda to pay his respects 
and witness his sister, Shuriri, be crowned. Then, after learning of T'Chaka's death, he decided to find his assassins. The assassins also destroyed the heart-shaped herb's garden during the raid, ending the legacy of the Black Panther. T'Challa was lured by Zarathos, giving him the ability to find the murderers, the time-traveling freemen. Mbakshula, the White, overwhelmed T'Challa, but before he could murder him, T'Challa accepted Zarathos's offer. T'Challa turned into the Ghost Panther and ate Mbakshula's soul. As soon as he rejected Zarathos's control and came to his senses, he was hit in the back by Eric Killraven. Zarathos persuaded T'Challa to accept her offer once more in the afterlife in order to save the kingdom and Shuriri from Killraven. Killraven was planning to devastate Wakanda with explosives in advance of the arrival of the Martian Masters, so that the isolated country would not be able to resist the invasion as it did in Killraven's reality. Ghost Panther hurried to Wakanda and stopped him. The assassin had the upper hand due to years of skill. As a result, in the afterlife, T'Chaka persuaded Zarathos to accept his service and was then brought back to life as a demonic panther. Ghost Panther vanquished Killraven with the aid of T'Chaka consuming his soul. After that, T'Challa ascended to the throne of Wakanda. Many scaled-down representations of Devondra started to sprout all across the planet after a while, as the gigantic Devondra proceeded to swallow Warp World. To combat Devondra's primary form inside Warp World, Emma Frost organized a global telepathic protest that included Ghost Panther. Adam Warlock and his companions returned the universe to normalcy when Adam Warlock defeated Gamora. To ensure the survival of the new life forms that emerged from the construction of Warp World, they created a space where it continued to live within a facet of the Soul Gem. His powers are the same as those of T'Challa and Jonathan Blaze. Iborian Ghost Rider The Savage Avengers have been making every effort to track down the venerable and malicious sorcerer Kulan Gath. Conan's long history with Kulan Gath had left him with a particularly strong sense of hatred for the sorcerer, and that hatred caused him to rebond with the alien symbiote that Kulan had tortured in the Savage Land. Like Doctor Strange, who brought the team together, Conan was the catalyst for the team's formation. Conan's back has been painted with a target by the symbiote's abilities, one that particularly calls the spirit of vengeance to his position. The Ghost Rider could smell the Cimmerians and the symbiote's malevolent influence from Kulan Gath. Even though Conan was unaware of Johnny Blaze's identity, he was certain to identify a warrior with a burning skull when he saw one, especially because he'd already witnessed one of Johnny's forerunners in action. Conan almost ended up in the heart of a different type of massacre when he was paid to kill a crazy monarch thousands of years ago. Conan stood back and watched as the Ghost Rider from his own time mercilessly destroyed the insane king's troops with little apparent effort on his part. Even though the motorbike that has become synonymous with Ghost Rider didn't exist back then, he nevertheless managed to go around on his very own enormous spider complete with a blazing head. Caleb Before or during the American Civil War, Caleb, a former slave, bought his freedom as well as the freedom of his wife. He found the wounded Confederate Lieutenant Travis Parham and treated him after a conflict between Confederate and Union soldiers. Travis spent two years working on the farm with Caleb and his family rather than departing to rejoin the fight. He departed and headed for the frontier when the conflict was over. Travis and his family were brutally murdered by George Reagan and his group after Travis fled because they thought they were better than Caleb. Two years later, Caleb was brought back from the grave by some sort of spirit of vengeance. He eliminated three of the drag whales, and the fourth surmounted death before igniting at Caleb's hands. Travis also came back at the same time, and the two of them started looking for Reagan's group in relation to Caleb's murder. Reagan's gang was eliminated piecemeal by the two, with Caleb attempting to assassinate Reagan but being stopped by Travis. Reagan, though, took his own life before he could. Unbeknownst to them, Reagan had struck a bargain with an unidentified force to bring his group back as terrifying monsters. Reagan and his zombie gang attacked the village of Snyder, and when Travis ran into them, they tore off his arm. At the same time as Caleb seemed to be killing the gang once more, they took him and everyone else into the town. The rider nearly killed every member of the gang, but when they threatened to kill Travis, the rider was forced to change back into Caleb. Travis rejected Caleb's pleas for him to go and was taken into the demon dimension with Reagan's group and Caleb. The two had come to this location in search of revenge, as Caleb explained how he had been transformed and informed Travis that his soul was cursed. He possessed the powers that other Ghost Riders like Jonathan Blaze wielded. In addition, it has been shown that Caleb's Ghost Rider could take control of dead people and use them to communicate with the living. He spoke to others with his voice and commanded the corpses with his thoughts. He was capable of moving across dimensions. He was also able to easily move himself and others to an infernal dimension by using his Hellfire to enter that region. 
Michael Badalino. Badalino himself said that he joined the NYPD after leaving the Marines because his father had been a police officer and he had no better ideas. Captain Dolan had reported that Badalino had previously served with special forces. When Jeffrey Piper joined the force, he was Piper's first partner. He talked favorably of the Punisher's brutal method of dealing with criminals. Later, he was hired as a detective and frequently worked on unique cases. The mayor designated Lieutenant Badalino as the leader of a task group to capture ghost rider Dan Ketch after the vigilante's murder was connected to that of Captain Dwight Jones. Michael's father received a hellfire attack because Mephisto manipulated ghost rider Johnny Blaze. The experience had driven him mad. While Michael was abroad on a mission, he killed his wife and daughters before killing himself. Michael held the Ghost Rider responsible and accepted Mephisto's invitation to confront them as a creature like himself named Vengeance. The caretaker intervened when Ketch and Blaze engaged in combat with Vengeance. He clarified that Mephisto had also deceived Badalino's family since they had ties to the Medallion of Power. In actuality, he traded his soul for the power that was his inheritance. He became a Midnight Sun. Vengeance stepped in for Ketch while he was gone, keeping watch over the area near Cyprus. Hills Cemetery. Anton Hellgate, a former foe of Badalino, became aware of the abilities that Vengeance and Ghost Rider possessed. He killed Roxanne, the wife of Blaze, and then he seized Badalino. Vengeance was subjected to experiments while in captivity as Hellgate worked to mimic the might of a spirit of Vengeance and combine it with his own. Ghost Rider finally managed to rescue him, but he appeared to be unstable and had lost the ability to change into Vengeance. Badalino joined a task team on Agent Unos. On one mission, he abruptly transformed back into vengeance, slaughtering both his squad and the criminals they were hunting. He went back to Hellgate and, this time, instead of only punishing the convicts, he killed them. He utilized a penis look when faced with Ghost Rider and Blaze, which was the first step towards discovering the truth about the Rider's background. Vengeance set off a tremendous explosion that destroyed both Hellgate and himself since he felt he'd gone too far. Badalino ended himself in Mephisto's realm, where he was subjected to torment by Blackheart, the new king of Hell. One day, Blackheart approached Badalino with a proposition while he was starting his strategy against the split Ghost Riders Noble Kale and Danny Ketch. He spat at Blackheart when asked to stop and when he refused, Blackheart left him to continue his endless misery. When Danny came upon Badalino, he liberated him from his torment with the aid of Spirit and Scritch and the three of them then traveled to confront Blackheart. When he finally faced Blackheart, he changed into vengeance and attacked the villain, giving Danny the time he needed to revive Noble's memory. Noble dispatched Blackheart out in a flash of light after discovering the truth and realizing that he was the Angel of Death. After Blackheart was destroyed, Badalino decided to stay and support Noble Kale, the new Hell King. Like everyone else, Badalino was astounded by Noble's declaration that all souls who have been imprisoned will be released and that devils have free choice as long as they do not harm. After seeing Noble disturb the natural order, Uriel showed up there and tried to strike him, but Noble was unresponsive. Before he could do anything, Noble swiftly intervened and exiled the angel from hell. In support of Noble, Badalino moves forward and tells Uriel to leave the area immediately. After that, Noble would go from hell and appoint Badalino to serve as his stand-in while he was gone. He has the same abilities as all in the possession of the Spirit of Vengeance except that he can transform into Ghost Rider at will. Deputy Kowalski When Deputy Kowalski decided to look into the numerous vehicle accidents on Highway 18, he was a member of the new Bueller Police Department. He went to the Wojciechowicz Funeral Home to speak with Clayton Wojciechowicz, the funeral home's director. Kowalski related the tale of trapped settlers in 1845 who were compelled to engage in cannibalism before killing. The historical site of this tragedy was destroyed by Highway 18, and Clayton's ancestor was the lone survivor who returned to build new Bueller. Wojciechowicz revealed certain qualities inherited from his ancestor when he decided to eat Kowalski for dinner and amputated the right hand of the man. The deputy, Wojciechowicz, and the Ghost Rider were engaged in a four-vehicle collision, but the deputy survived. The Ghost Rider came for Wojciechowicz to leave him with his ancestor's ghostly victims and break the Highway 18 curse, but Kowalski tried to put him in jail. Although Ghost Rider cautioned him not to get involved, he nonetheless stabbed Ghost Rider, earning him the penance stare and leaving him devastated. Kowalski, who had lost everything, 
grew to despise the Ghost Rider ferociously and vowed to exact revenge. Kowalski was contacted by a man acting as Zakiel's pawn when he was in a liquor store. The man brought Kowalski to Michael Badalino, who handed him a special shotgun so he could fight the Ghost Rider. Kowalski came and saw the Ghost Rider competing with the other Ghost Rider, Danny Ketch, in the Arabian Desert. Kowalski was assaulted by Danny Ketch after shooting Blaze in the chest right before he sucked Blaze's strength. Kowalski retained a piece of the Ghost Rider's strength, transforming him into the monster known as Vengeance. He also has the same powers and abilities as all Ghost Riders under the Spirit of Vengeance. Additionally, Kowalski gained the magical power to change into a demon known as the Spirit of Pollution after trying to absorb Johnny Blaze's Spirit of Vengeance. The Pollution Stare magnifies the corruption of the subject until it swallows them, in contrast to the Penance Stare, which makes the victim feel every anguish that the offender has ever caused anybody else innocent in their lives. Speed Demon The Night Spectre found an amateur mystic named Blaze Allen. The Night Spectre fled when Blaze Allen resisted letting it absorb his soul. Father Hellstrom ultimately married Blaze Allen, a worker at the Quentin Carnival, to Iris Simpson. Iris was drained of her life force by the Night Spectre, who emerged shortly after Blaze and Iris's wedding. Blaze fell into profound despair as a result, and he started getting more and more involved with magic. He was eventually approached by Merlin, who assisted Blaze in forming a link with the demon Etrigan, so that Blaze could rescue Iris' soul from the Night Spectre and ensure that she would have a peaceful afterlife. Blaze Allen turned into the second speed demon by muttering, Gone. Gone a form of man. Arise the demon, Etrigan. He faced out against enemies such as the extraterrestrial Doctor Doomsday, Vengeance, Watu the Guardian, the Two-Faced Goblin, and of course the Night Spectre during his travels as Speed Demon. Wally West, who worked at the Quentin Carnival with him and regarded Blaze like a father, later learned his true identity. After that, Speed Demon and Wally fought the Night Spectre together, and they were successful in releasing the souls that the Night Spectre was imprisoning, including those of Jay Garrick and Iris Simpson. He had the same powers as those of Johnny Blaze and Barry Allen of New Earth. Kushala. Midway through the 1800s, an Apache lady named Kushala lived. Kushala's parents were slaughtered while the American army was attacking her tribe. She prayed to her creator out of fury, but the spirit of vengeance had taken possession of her instead. She burned everyone until only their spirits were left after using her new ability. Kushala, who now went by the moniker Demon Rider, searched the globe for and studied many kinds of magic to comprehend her curse. With Auntie Jess's assistance, she was able to exert more control over her demon and as a result of her prowess in the mystic arts, she eventually rose to the position of Sorcerer Supreme during her time. Kushala came across Merlin while looking for a cure. In exchange for her joining a group of Sorcerers Supreme from various times to battle a potent being known as the Forgotten, Merlin agreed to expel the Spirit of Vengeance. The squad was betrayed by their friend Sir Isaac Newton after they defeated the Forgotten, and he went on to take the Spirit of Vengeance out of Kushala to aid him in his quest to become a deity. Kushala felt hollow without the spirit inside her and understood she would have to burn so the world does not in order to prevent that power from ending up in the wrong hands. Kushala was prepared to go back to her time after beating Newton and accepting her load, but Merlin informed her that her narrative wasn't over yet and that her fortunes were still up in the air. Merlin advised her simply, before disappearing and leaving her trapped in the present, live sensibly. Keep in mind that time is harsh, a good existence, however, is not. After Merlin left, she went to the Sanctum Sanctorum with Doctor Strange and Mindful One, with whom she'd become quite close throughout her trip. She has all the powers of Johnny Blaze. Her additional powers are the superhuman ability to change into the Demon Rider belongs to Kushala. She can produce, manipulate, and infuse fire into her horse as the Demon Rider, causing it to go at incredible speeds and leave a hellfire trail in its wake. She's also capable of flying with her horse. The Supreme Earth Sorcerer has always been Kushala. She's proven to be knowledgeable and skilled in a variety of magic including chaos magic, binding spells, Nordic magic, and many others. Kushala's abilities, in contrast to Doctor Strange's astral projection, enable her physical body to traverse the planes of reality as well as her intellect. Goose Rider An ordinary goose was transformed into the Goose Rider after dusk. Although he's a nightmare, his biggest issue was the lack of movies and bowling alleys in the region. Once, he had to interrupt what he was watching because many kids were using his bike to heat their marshmallows. After scaring them away, he rode aimlessly for some time, but the evil chainsaw, who he'd never met, suddenly knocked his bike over. After he'd recovered from the collision, the rider asked that his adversary explain himself, but chainsaw only provided his name and a threat against the goose 
creature. The rider then used an anvil that fell from the heavens on Chainsaw to defeat him. The rider traveled once again in search of food after resolving the issue. Because of the night's darkness, the rider failed to see a sign indicating that there was no bridge in that way, and as a result, the rider fell into a pond. The Goose Rider was one of the numerous superhuman larval Earth residents, who were later taken to a brand new planet by the Bee Yonder. The secret furs event attracted the attention of the Bee Yonder, who wanted to see these superheroes and villains square off. The Goose Rider encountered the larval Earth Red Skull during this secret furs, who smacked the Rider in the face with an uppercut. The Rider can call forth the Devils of Heck by honking, which can result in a storm in the fall of anvils. Or it could just be a coincidence. Shoba Mirza When Danny Ketch was at his lowest moment in life, Shoba Mirza encountered him. Shoba heard that Daniel was arguably the greatest of all time, though she wouldn't have known it from the drunken state she found him in. Shoba sorely needed the might of the Ghost Rider. Shoba left Danny to get sober while she faced the menace of verminous wrecks on her own, since she knew he was more interested in her appearance than his sense of responsibility. She was unaware that Daniel had Mary LeBeau, her friend, evict the Ghost Rider persona from his his body since. Without his abilities, Daniel wouldn't have been much of a help. Daniel had little knowledge of the origins of his abilities until a Zadkiel agent changed all of that. Daniel was made aware of his company by the Minion. Verminous Rex was taking the abilities of other spirits of vengeance from throughout the planet for his use. Shoba was the next person on his list, and Daniel was astounded to see her change into a Ghost Rider. Similar to a drug addict, Zadkiel had previously used little dosages of Daniel's former power to convince him to support him, and this time was no different. Ketch requested something, and it was given to him on the pretext of assisting Shoba to obtain another dose. Shoba was captured because Daniel was careless and preoccupied with his ambition for power rather than seeing the wider picture. Daniel spent several hours looking for her, but Shoba was the one who eventually located him after leaving Rex's dimension. Shoba implored Daniel to save her because she was damaged beyond repair and the creature inside her was threatening to seize control. While he was unsure of what to do, Ketch absorbed her talents into himself like a parasite. Shoba praised Daniel as she died in his arms because her human half had been preserved. Shoba, in her Ghost Rider form, is said to have had two extra appendages in addition to the skills and abilities granted to individuals who are the Ghost Rider. Barbara Ketch Up to the point when she and her brother Daniel were escaping criminals, Barbara Ketch's past is likely similar to that of her Earth 616 counterpart. Barbara touched the medallion on Daniel's motorcycle and was converted into the Ghost Rider when her brother was shot dead while attempting to get her to safety. After that, she murdered the criminals but failed to take down Death Watch. Later, the spirit of vengeance inside of her attempted to persuade her to use her abilities to commit murder. But Barbara was able to seize control of the spirit and acquire the full power of the Ghost Rider. She then began a murder rampage in which she killed several criminals. Doctor Strange, Spider-Man and Johnny Blaze ultimately managed to stop her and remove the spirit of vengeance from her. Barbara died as a result of the separation, but she believed it was for the best since she now understood who she had turned into. She was happy to be rejoining her brother as she passed away. Her special powers are the same as those of Daniel Ketch of Earth 616. Nima. This spirit of vengeance was created following the traditions of the region of the globe he was stationed in and was based on a vindictive god of Tibetan Buddhism. This spirit of vengeance was created in accordance with the traditions of the region of the globe he was stationed in and was based on a vindictive god of Tibetan Buddhism. He was known as Krag Thung, the Guru Dragpo, the Wrath of the Heavens, the Blood Drinker, he who seeks revenge in our name, or Ghost Rider, in the Ngari Prefecture to Tibet. He assaulted and destroyed two Chinese military garrisons, which prompted a general to launch an attack on a village to track out the perpetrators. When the troops refused to retreat to China, Nima arrived and threatened them with his anger before attacking them. Unfortunately, Johnny Blaze discovered him a little too late. Daniel Ketch, a former spirit of vengeance who served as Zadkiel's servant and is now searching for other ghost riders to murder so that Zadkiel may claim their powers as his own, is a former spirit of vengeance himself. For a brief moment, Nima's name was brought to Blaze and the caretaker's attention. Krag Thung's complete range of skills is still unknown. However, it is safe to presume that he had every spirit of vengeance's set of abilities. He does, however, have a penance skill that he developed via his principles. His additional powers are Stare of the Thousand Buddhas, a powerful penance stare that enables him to exact revenge on those who have abused the defenseless by making them experience the suffering of their victims. He allegedly has a third eye that appears on his forehead. Hellfire will erupt around him and his victim during this risky act.
Marvelous verdict, Ghost Rider has a strong sense of the kind of small-town Americana you could see in Stephen King's writing. With dark, unnerving supernatural undertones, mix that with the more visual medium of comics, and you have some very unpleasant visuals. Some truly horrifying illustrations from Roy Thomas, Gary Friedrich, and Mike Plug provide a really well-handled plot and setup. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.